a mountainside of uh, hematoid ferruginous hematite included quartzes. Uh, uh, Pretty flat section of quartz, so you have the, the quartz matrix sitting on maybe a, a, a young feldspar. Sitting on top of that would be this, this solid generation of quartz crystals. Uh, actually, at least two generations of growth, because what you had, you had an original quartz crystal, which was coated by hematite uh, and then oxidized uh, into girthite. Uh, our forefathers used to uh, use ochre to paint their bodies to look all dangerous and nasty in times of war, among others, and also for ceremonial purposes. So it would be the ochre trapped, and then the second generation of uh, uh, a silica or quartz came over, uh, a recrystallizing, so you'd have an original uh, quartz formation underneath. And uh, the second generation would have had some hematite which didn't get exposed to oxygen, so it didn't get time to oxidize, trapped inside it, so you'd have little gray flecks. This uh, material you see on the, on the quartzes here is most likely a, a highlight, which is a variety of opal, the opal AN, and fluoresces under shortwave UV, a, a yellow, uh, a yellow, bright yellow color. So, so under UV, you'd actually have this as pretty a, a, a aesthetically appealing specimen, and under UV, you'd have sections of it glowing this bright yellow to green. All the way from the uh, Orange River region, general region, uh, Namakwaland, Northern Cape of South Africa, um, more accurate actually the Northern Cape of South Africa in, in, in geological terms. Oh, I'm really struggling to hold this one, it is huge.